at the birth of him who is called the bright and morning star Travis Wingood, so one more video before I go to bed, but you'll probably get it in the morning. I, I did a book about uh, the conundrum of Mormonism, and it dealt with the issue of Brigham Young. On how uh, Mormons are, are stuck with a conundrum of of whether to accept um, Brigham Young as the true successor or not because if, as he claims he's the true successor and Mormons claim he's the true successor but then uh, all that he did which is very unchristlike and thus the conundrum is the church still true through Brigham Young? <clears throat> and so, uh, Joseph's original religion is no longer the same under Brigham Young. But Brigham Young claimed all of it came from Joseph Smith. <laughs> uh huh. It's easy to fool those who are already in on the, the game in the first place. There's no need to fool them. It's others that he had to fool. Uh, but then the United States came in and shut down their corruption. And uh, that's when we get uh, uh, the new resurrected church in 1923. And again, we are now faced with a conundrum because they're clueless about Joseph Smith because of the lies that the Brigham Young Knights had been telling about him. But they can't keep Brigham's organization going because the United States shut it down. And they will not allow that organization to exist anymore. And so they had to create a whole new religion. But again, they're claiming it was a direct line of succession through Brigham Young to Joseph Smith. And it's the exact same church. <laughs> That's the conundrum. <clears throat> and to put it in a, a, a different way, say that uh, Joseph Smith had his organization Brigham Young was Methodist, so he decides to turn it into a Methodist church. And Mormons believe that while well, a president of the church can do whatever he wants, okay, he turns it into a Methodist church. And then the John Taylor. I haven't done too much research on him. Haven't gotten that far yet. Uh, but say he's... Uh, well, Sidney Rigdon was Baptist. But sure, why not? Baptist. And so John Taylor then takes over after Brigham Young rearranges the order because he, he's pissed with Thorson Hyde <laughs> about not accepting his, his uh, <coughs> um, his Adam as Heavenly Father God. Uh, and so he decides, well, we're going to be Baptist now. And then uh, Wilford Woodruff, uh, well, we're going to be uh, uh, Presbyterian. Lorenzo Snow, uh, uh, lacking on Lutheran. Uh, and then uh, Joseph Fielding Smith. Well, we're, we're going to go back to whatever Joseph's was. <laughs> and so he tries to restore it, but it, it's not understood. And so he just does a revisionist uh, Joseph Smith religion. And then Heber J. Grant comes in and 
and creates a criminal organization because he literally did <laughs> and uh, uh, and and so on uh, can Mormons see the problem with that I hope so because that's the conundrum of Mormonism is that you can't have a president of the church changing the doctrine changing God changing the theology changing scriptures changing this changing that changing the temple and the covenants because you're creating a whole new religion and as much as Nelson is hinge pointing he's again taking the church in a completely new church direction doing away with the old church we're creating a whole new one and in the Christmas devotional he said that was Lucifer if anybody caught it and and so I uh, there is only one faith, one religion, one baptism. And Mormons know this, it's just in a different understanding as Christianity. Because I think Christianity are now starting to harmonize with each other, except for those evangelicals who are going their own way with the big churches, mega churches, uh, after the televangelist days. But so many Christ like scandals <laughs> made some major dents in evangelicalism, but there's still the brainwashing that they've succeeded with uh, has evangelical followers dominating America now. <clears throat> and so with Nelson, uh, he steps right in, his his solemn assembly and uh, does away with the high priest group and so there's no more elevating elders to high priests until and unless they become a leader of the church and uh, and nobody fully understands why because they're unfamiliar with section 132 of the Doctrine and Covenants in connection with section 76 of the Doctrine and Covenants. Section 76 is about the three kingdoms of glory and in order to obtain the highest degree of the celestial kingdom you have to be a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. You can't just be an elder. You can't just be uh, anything else. You have to be a high priest. And then when you apply section 132, Brigham Young, because it was Brigham Young's thing, even though he claims Joseph Smith wrote it, Brigham Young now says, well, you got to have ten virgins also to become uh, celestial and exalted. <coughs> and so when you see Nelson doing away with uh, the elevation of the old elders who feel more comfortable hanging out with their their fellow high priests uh, they just get bumped up to be high priests unless there's other issues <laughs> but for the most part yeah they just get oh yeah you're of the age we'll just make you a high priest you can keep attending the high priest group now that's done away with everybody remains elders and then Nelson went and changed the temple and one of those changes was the law of chastity and in the law of chastity it was worded in such a way as to refer to section 132 that Mormons now have to be obedient to that chapter which ten virgins polygamy and so I saw it very clearly and reported it to the judge and Nelson got pissed <laughs> and changed it again 
I haven't found out yet what he changed it to, if that was even the one he changed. But, uh, yeah, I caught him. I caught him in what he's hinge pointing to. There's a reason why the United States did away with the Edmunds Tucker Act in 1978. What else happened in 1978 that the church was forced to do? So now you see a quid pro quo. As the church said, fine, we'll let blacks have the priesthood again, but take away the Edmunds Tucker Act. Done. Certainly the church would never go back to being a Brighamite church that the United States had to go in and shut down. So, sure. <sighs> and so then we have this coronavirus. And Nelson, a medical doctor, has taken away home teaching back in that first conference as well. And so there's no line of communication between home teaching, home teachers and the families so that they can then report it to the elders quorum or the high priest group and then get it back to the bishop. Taking care of everybody's needs during this coronavirus. As of course a true prophet in the office of Moses would do what Moses did and keep everybody home making sure that the storehouses that Joseph built could be utilized during that closure. Huh. But a new pharaoh who did not know Joseph did not want to follow that process for the firstborn of Ephraim <coughs> through Joseph. And the firstborn died. And so uh, Nelson forced the governor to follow the same pattern that he wanted followed, and that is to spread and escalate the virus. And as a medical doctor, he knows exactly how to do it. You are slow to close, then you close. And then you open too early and you don't shut down again. And it's escalated. And it's going to continue to escalate because Herbert will not quarantine anybody. The only people that go to the hospital are those that are near death, needing a respirator. Everybody else goes free. Well, you're fine. Go out and spread the coronavirus. This is a medical doctor who has the Hippocratic Oath to do no harm. He's a leader of a church that claims that he's in direct communication with Jesus Christ himself, the great healer who took care of the poor and healed the sick. And yet Nelson is spreading and escalating sickness, death, and poverty. So there's a conundrum. He even ordered Mormons to wear masks. Did you guys even remember that? And yet Mormons chose to be anti-maskers because they're anti-science because Nelson said hey we'll hold too fast because the first one didn't work to cure coronavirus and then went and did his healing power of gratitude to cure coronavirus and then after the fact he's now saying uh, I'm so grateful to hear everybody who's gone around 
doing acts of gratitude <laughs> as if he never intended it to cure coronavirus yeah whatever I got the original video I know exactly what you're doing <clears throat> and then despite ordering Mormons to wear the mask despite the spread and the escalation over all of Utah being the worst it's ever been since the beginning he has his Christmas devotional where he announces Lucifer is God but then also is not wearing a mask when Elder Renland was previously announced on that Saturday as having the coronavirus is this that token of bravery thing that the Book of Mormon talks about is it just an acceptable percentage of loss of life is that what doing no harm means is this just herd immunity and again survival of the fittest is that what our doctrine is now that we no longer have the Book of Mormon as the keystone of our religion it's just there to trick people into thinking that we're still from Joseph Smith but he's not wearing a mask and thus set the example last night to all Mormons watching oh he's not wearing a mask I now have permission not to wear a mask and so now we're into December now you're gonna have emboldened anti-maskers here in Utah who were the butt of the late night comedy jokes as granny is talking about some whacked out uh, Russian through Q can it's not conspiracy theory that's just the wrong word but that's what they trick you with his redefining of words such as democracy we're not supposed to be a democracy democracy is a horrifying religion or uh, government because it's the majority rules and so all you have to do is brainwash the majority and you can have the majority commit crime and you descend into anarchy you don't want majority because the minority always loses and the Book of Mormon even warns about that too that when the majority chooses wickedness that's when destruction comes and that's what we're witnessing now so yes Nelson is involved with the destruction of America but what is that connection oh yeah and a temple yet to be determined in a major city in Russia that very first solemn assembly he's openly acknowledging what he is and what he's turning this church into He even said in that conference this is not the church of Joseph Smith and he then used it in a broader context that it's the church of Jesus Christ when he emphasized that we're keeping the full name no more nicknames Jesus is pissed with nicknames after all these presidents previously who were not informed by Jesus that Jesus was mad about the nicknames now all of a sudden he's mad and yet with Latter-day Saints again we have another conundrum Latter-day Saints indicates the latter days signs in the heavens events on earth during those signs in the heavens and yet they've come out and said no uh -uh. it's scientific predictions rather than prophecy from scripture prophets and uh, 
they uh, denounced the uh, tetrad with the three apostles dying as having anything to do with the latter days and denounced those who are pushing it as those trying to make money as if the church isn't making money for being antichrist and uh, and yeah we've had all the signs in the heavens uh, since 2017 and they've been silent there was a letter sent to the 70 in which the 70 then changed Wikipedia out of concern that something may actually happen because they do have a an understanding of the signs and what they mean as the person who wrote the letter made it very clear <laughs> as Monson went and died under the fulfillment of Revelation 12 concerning the stars falling from the tail of the dragon and then in conjunction with a major lunar eclipse within that 30 day time period as it was a blue moon super blue blood moon wolf <laughs> it was everything thrown at it but a wolf so, uh, you shall know them by their fruits they are wolves in sheep's clothing referring to prophets <clears throat> so it, it is kind of disturbing as a born and raised Mormon to have learned the truth and knowing that I can never go back it's the church of Lucifer literally I can't go back I literally would be denying truth to go back to the church And Mormons don't understand that because they don't do the research that I've done they don't ask the questions that need to be asked they don't say hey that's not in the Book of Mormon or that's what's warned about in the Book of Mormon what are you doing that for maybe Mormons are making excuses if they do know of some things maybe they're descendants of the Danites of Brigham Young which is a very high probability but uh, many have left the church already it's just those hardcores hardliners that are still left in the church that are gonna die Mormon and the sad thing is is that they say well the millennium will find out every what we'll find out the truth we'll find out after we're dead and we're in heaven well if you wait till after you're dead Mormon doctrine says you're never gonna find out because you aren't going to be exalted Mormons do not understand their own religion because it's changed so many times and so now I hear Mormons say I'm just going to follow the, the current president of the church only the living prophets and they don't see how that also is wrong the Book of Mormon is the keystone, remember? You can know and judge a president of the church by whether they adhere to the Book of Mormon or whether they just talk the talk, 
draw near to me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They teach for doctrines the philosophies of men. From the first vision, if you don't know Mormons. So, alrighty, we'll call it a night. We'll do this in the morning. Ha, ha, ha.